Mercedes perennial S-Class limo used to categorically rule the roost in the executive car class, but within the last few years, its competition has crept ever closer to swiping class owners. We hailed the all-new Audi A8 as a feast for tech fans, and the big barge from Ingolstadt was a surprisingly good steer but that Doe ST mean the Sonderklasse has been left behind. In order to keep it on top, Mercedes has tweaked the S-Class for 2017 with our first experience of the facelifted car coming in the shape of the ballistic AMG 63 and 65 models. There is way more to the Swiss Limo S repertoire than some burly V8 Ness, though. Now we've gotten to grips with the volume seller in the lineup in long wheelbase format, with impressions from both the driver's seat and as a passenger. Wait, there was a facelift? There was in summer 2017 but it was more about subtle refinements to the recipe than massive whitewashing changes. The headlines are a range of new straight-six engines to the non-AMG versions, the energizing comfort system that modifies the music, ambient lighting and even fragrance to alter the mood of those inside as well as upgrades to the assistance tech. The adaptive cruise is now operated via button on the wheel rather than Mercedes' usual stock-based method and reacts to junctions, roundabouts and toll booths by changing the speed. Your only real visual differences are the new headlight clusters, which now have a three-stroke daytime running light effect rather than a single line. What is the interior like? Inside the sumptuous cockpit. The driver is cocooned by a huge swooping dashboard with a one-piece veneer of two massive, crisp information screens, and hugged by well-padded and well-upholstered leather armchairs. The fact that they have massage functions means you ll easily go cross-eyed with ecstasy behind the wheel. Speaking of the wheel it has new version that has bit more contemporary than the two-spoke one offered previously, and now houses the cruise control settings and a smorgasbord of various other functions. The infotainment is controlled by the standard Mercedes command controller with scroll wheel, touchpad and steering wheel interfaces. Navigation input can be a little clunky if you're reusing the scroll wheel, mind, and the sheer number of systems meant that the infotainment lagged a little now and then. It would be preferable not to be choked by the pretensioner every time you put your seatbelt on and a little more reach adjustment for the steering wheel would be greatly appreciated for a lanky fellow, too. The L is a big car. An astute observation, Captain Obvious. A long wheelbase executive car isn't he exactly going to be the most wieldy of machines, so unless you re on the open road, prepare yourself for how far the bonnet stretches when you re crawling through a traffic jam. You may also have to resort to the 360-degree parking cameras to squeeze through width-restricted roads or multi-story car parks without dinging the precious paintwork or curbing a wheel. Even when you re in the parking bay, you won't e completely fit in it. Parallel parking? Chances are the S-Class is too wide. In an end-on bay parking? ULL stick out by about a foot, so good luck with that. The hands-free parking does its best but even it struggles to squeeze into regular sized parking spaces without some kind of overhang.